we are joined by a lady who I know Jakari Jackson is definitely going to want to interview because he's really been on the uh, slavery uh, beat as a reporter, uh, documenting that slavery is just as prevalent now with sheer numbers as it was 200 years ago. It's just uh, camouflaged a little bit better. And Kachita Sarnoff has worked with some of the biggest presidential campaigns around the world. She's been a crisis communications advisor to several Fortune 400 companies. Uh, she comes very highly recommended uh, by Victor Ostrowski, who helped publish her book, uh, who's a Mossad uh, whistleblower who, who we've had on as a guest who exposed Mossad false flags, but also other government uh, criminal activities. And he helped her. He's a best-selling author, uh, publish her book. She's an investigative journalist who spent years trying to get it out, and it's finally been published. Uh, she also focuses in on Jeffrey Epstein, uh, or Epstein, who is at the center of the pedophile island. So Traffic King... Uh, is the book, and the website is Conchita Sarnoff, C-O-N-C-H-I-T-A, Sarnoff.com. And I'm going to tweet out at Real Alex Jones and also put a link to her uh, on Facebook because this is important. This is just a quick 25-minute interview or so, but we will, will have her back uh, as an expert to drill more into this because I don't cover modern slavery to lessen the horrible transatlantic slave trade that killed millions of people, tens of millions of people, enslaved hundreds of millions in the aggregate, or the Arab slave trade that was even bigger, or the Roman slave trade, or the Chinese slave trade. I mean, every culture's done it. Doesn't mean it's good. We as a culture said, this is a bad contract. We don't like this. We're not doing this. But the type of slavery now is kids and women of every race, color, and creed, uh, and the most disadvantaged, you know, uh, people that are also grabbed out of countries and taken to islands uh, as slave labor. Foxcom factories, Apple, uh, the suicide nets. I mean, this is bigger than it was at the peak of slavery here in 1800. And, and every historian, you know, admits that. So we're so busy trying to ban the word lynch because it scares folks, the Irish name and, and brown paper bags that we're not focusing in on this. Uh, but uh, she also heads up an organization that exposes all this, atrvt.org. And, you know, the, the best way to break this down is she's an investigative re reporter, uh, for the Daily Beast with her expose behind the pedophile sweetheart deal, published the Daily Beast uh, and was submitted for the Pulitzer Prize. There's so much more to go over with her. Uh, so so in the time we've got, you just take over here and break down the basics, your background, and uh, where this rabbit hole really goes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Alex, very much for having me on your show. I, I appreciate it. Um, as you said, uh, this has been a, a long journey uh, because... Uh, the establishment, both both parties, Republicans and Democrats, have tried to silence the information that is included in the book. Uh, the book is more a reportage of not only my journey in the underbelly of human trafficking, but also it is it exposes the longest running U.S. federal human trafficking case. Um, here is a case that started. Uh, Mr. Jeffrey Epstein, uh, who is a registered level three sex offender, was arrested in 2005. He was indicted two years later uh, in October 2007 for one count of solicitation of prostitution with a minor. And the incredible thing is that they even identified the victims as prostitutes or the victim instead of identifying them as what they are, which is victims, because any a girl aged 15, 14, 13, 16, certainly under the age of 18, should not be labeled as a prostitute. She or he should be labeled as a victim, uh, especially when they're up against a grown adult. So here was this case that I stumbled into, uh, having come back from Mexico and almost uh, losing my life. Um, I was threatened uh, by a government official, an agency official, uh, to be, I was going to be lynched if I asked another question, according to the lady who, who I was interviewing. And uh, after coming back from that harrowing trip, uh, and of course, uh, after also being uh, offered a bribe not to write this book, I realized that this case was important on different levels. Uh, the most important level was the cover-up. Um, I, I believe, in my opinion, that this cover-up was far greater than the Watergate and the Lewinsky scandal and the Profumo affair c combined. 
I believe this is a very important case because it set precedent. Um, the reason it has set precedent, Alex, is because we have several cases, uh, human trafficking cases in the state of Florida, uh, that have tried to use the Epstein defense as their defense in order not to go to jail and in order to get less time. There's one particular case today. Uh, the defendant's name, uh, ironically, is Archangel Michael Hernandez. He's a Hispanic male. He's clearly not rich. And in his defense, his attorney, Joel DeFabio, also uh, from Miami, um, his defense claimed that because he was a poor Latino and not friendly with our former president, Bill Clinton, he is now looking at eight to 10 years for the more, some of the similar charges that, were, that Mr. Epstein was charged with. So here you have a case, how many years later, 2016, going back and using a 2007 defense. And that's why I thought this case, one of the reasons why this case was so important is because it now has set precedent. Sure, them, them only giving Epstein a slap on the wrist when he's bringing all these presidents and role leaders out to Pedophile Island with girls as young as, what, 10 years old. This yeah. is creating a precedent to give a slap on the wrist. And listen, I'm a libertarian. I don't approve of a lot of the stuff going on, but if it's consensual and it's adults, uh, you know, leave it alone. I, I mean, I'm not for drugs, but I'm for decriminalization. I'm not for prostitution, but I'm for decriminalization. Uh, but when you involve minors, I want to come down hard on folks, but it seems like with the Catholic Church or Boys Town or Penn State, when you've got a high government officials involved, it gets covered up because this is, you know, just a crime too big to be prosecuted. And so it, it's it's just amazing. I mean, how deep does this rabbit hole go? For folks that don't know, talk about some of the stuff, how young these children are, some of the numbers we're talking about here, how big this trafficking is. Okay, well, let, let's, let's start with, in 2012, Congress reported that there were 300,000 American, that is U.S.-born children being trafficked in the United States. That's in 2012. The number has now risen to a million. Uh, the UN, the United Nations, uh, claims that there are 22 million children being trafficked worldwide. That's an enormous number, uh, however you slice it. And according to some media reports, it is a business that is worth over $167 billion. That is larger than Google, Nike, and Starbucks combined, than the profits of these three companies combined. So the, I believe one of the reasons this business has become so enormous and so out of control is because you've got online, inter, uh, pornography, as you might know, Alex, is the largest business online. Child pornography is the second largest business online. Uh, Ashton Kutcher, the actor, he created a foundation called wearethorn.org, wearethorn.org, which helps the uh, certain law enforcement agencies with data and metrics. And he's got some incredible data and facts on, on that website. And, and the reason I'm promoting it is only because it's been very useful to me and to many NGOs sure. that, that work in the field. So here we have these numbers that are incredible. And by the way, the only way, the only method that we actually even have numbers today is because the victims have been arrested. The police, the local police departments are the first line of defense. So if a victim, if a child is not arrested, it cannot be identified whether it's a prostitute or a victim or a trafficker or a pimp or a john. Now, the victims prior to the last, well, I would say within the last five years, a lot of things have changed because the police departments have become very educated. And that is one thing that my foundation, our organization is attempting to do. We are attempting to educate all public schools in the 15,000 school districts on how to identify traffickers online, because that's what's happening today. Traffickers are no longer sitting in a van waiting outside a school or a shopping mall or a movie theater to abduct children and traffic them. No, they're now going online. They're chatting up children. They're befriending them online. So it, this is absolutely. And I've got two daughters that are young and a son. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why I won't let them on the Internet by themselves is because there are these predators posing in there. And I've seen just reading the news every day for years, a pattern where it's almost always local cops, not that they're perfect, but on average less corrupt, that are actually busting the pedophiles. And so many times it's national deputy directors of Homeland Security, top FBI. And from my research, there's almost like pedophile clubs 
that are yes. taking over government, just like the Catholic Church, to protect themselves and operate. And that's why they're trying to federalize local police so that they can't bust up these networks. But it, what I've said, does that mesh at any level with what your research has found? Absolutely. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I, I believe that's one of the reasons why my book has not was not published for seven years and Random House Mexico killed the book deal in 2014. I mean, I signed a book deal in 2009. The more I dug, the more I found out, the more I exposed, the less they wanted to publish the book. Um, I have had three agents in the past uh, X number of years. I mean, I don't want to expose everything because you could, you know. No, no, see I understand. You've been blocked just like right. Facebook admits they, you know, you know, right. they block stuff they don't like. I mean, this is the right. age of stealth censorship. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, so back to this, back to this, this case. So here we have a case where the pedophile, who is a very generous donor to the D Democratic Party, uh, was given a slap on the wrist, um, and and he implicated a number of Democrats. And yet he was pardoned during a Republican administration. Uh, and I'm sure that those who pardoned him were also part of the Republican establishment. So you've got, you know, both parties who don't really want to expose what went behind the scenes. But if, when you read the book, you'll understand through the Dershowitz deposition, you know, he even implicated Harvard law professor Alan Dershowitz, one of the victims, Virginia Louise Roberts, uh, implicated Professor Dershowitz, and they just settled the case, I believe, on April 8th. And why, why was this case settled right away? That's another question you'll find out in the book. But, you know, there are many questions that I tried to answer uh, uh, as best as I could, because the, this, this uh, rabbit hole, as you call it, is so deep uh, and so wide that uh, even Alice in Wonderland would have had quite a uh, quite, uh, problem trying to dig herself out of it. Well, yeah. well, uh, Conchita Sarnoff, stay right there. We're going to come back to break and come right back to you. Uh, but I tell you, this rabbit hole goes so deep. Uh, it's so frightening to realize the type of monsters we have literally all around us that want control of our society, uh, that want to run our lives, that want to dominate us, that want to be able to shut down the new independent media, uh, so this information doesn't come out, but we're going to cover it here uh, on this broadcast. Of course, Bill Clinton and others went to that island uh, that Conchita Sarnoff has been for a decade trying to expose, the last seven years not having her book published. It's now been published, and we'll give you the details of that when we come back from break, her website, so that you can uh, find that and, and, and get a copy of that and get that out to other folks. You may, as a viewer or listener of the show, already know all this, but other folks don't. They just don't realize the level of evil that we're dealing with. Look at the royal family, all the pedophilia in England, the highest government ministers. They don't even let you in. A lot of the folks I've been told don't even like this, but they have to do it to become compromised or these mafias don't accept you. Kind of like low-level mob will say, you got to kill somebody who's innocent to be a made man. Well, that's just regular organized crime. When you get up to the highest levels of betraying countries and carrying out evil, they go all the way. So ConchitaSarnoff.com, ATRVT.org. We're going to go to break. We're going to come right back with her and more. Uh, we have our best-selling product back in stock. It is the Vitamin Mineral Fusion from InfoWarsLife.com, made by one of the top labs in the country. Totally delicious and organic. Uh, it is uh, flavored by the vitamins and minerals that are in it and a small dose of xylitol. Extremely healthy. All the vitamins, all the minerals, all the amino acids, super concentrated, uh, other leading brands are twice the size, but the same, you know, value in there. But regardless, you absorb more of this when you drink it. Especially old folks have such absorption problems. I'm getting my grandmother on this and Secret 12. And your purchase supports the broadcast. InfoWarsLife.com takes you right to the nutraceuticals. InfoWarsStore.com is the general store with the Hillary for President t-shirts and the Molon Labe shirts and the books, the films, the non-GMO heirloom seeds. Thousands of items. The preparedness items, the media, the gear, the specials, it's all there. Infowarsstore.com, Infowarslife.com, MadeIn1776.com is the Made in America apparel, but those are all subsites of Infowarsstore.com. We also have 10% off when you sign up for auto ship, cancel any time, and it gets even better. Not just 10% off. Free shipping on all, all orders of $50 or more. This is an expensive media operation to run. We sell a lot of products that are high quality at low prices in the competitive market to fund ourselves the old-fashioned way, not with taxpayer money, not with big corporate money. We've got the Make America Free Again hats. 
Uh, we've got it all. InfoWarsStore.com, InfoWarsLife.com. But Vitamin Mineral Fusion, so amazing, is back in, sold out in a week and a half when we first had our first run in. It's almost got five-star reviews, third-party sites like Power Reviews. Find out more today, whether it's Secret 12 or X2 or Super Mel Vitality sold out, but Anthroplex is back in. TV viewers, this is a radio slash TV broadcast. The nightly news is 7 o'clock Central weeknights. Find details at InfoWars.com forward slash show. But take the Senate hearings now that are about to start on the admissions that Facebook selectively censors ideas they don't like but doesn't tell you. You may agree with censoring conservatives or anti-war people, but it doesn't mean that it should happen. I mean, there are tyrants out there. Just because some people want to restrict views doesn't mean they have a right to do it. And see, once that happens, now you can shut down the details of Bill Clinton's best buddy and the pedophile island that we've been exposing. Now, getting back to our guests, in the five minutes we have left, Conchita, um, what else is, is key for you to relay to folks that's uh, in your books so they understand why the system was fighting so hard to suppress it? Alex, I think one of the uh, reasons that uh, propelled me to move forward and to be so persistent was um, after the fact I met the prosecutor on Epstein's case. And as you will read in my book, I have his letter and certain documents uh, at the beginning of the book because I needed to uh, relay to the readers how important this particular case is, certainly when it comes to our future and the future of our children and the, and, and the future of the, of the enforcement of the Trafficking Victims Protection Act, which is the federal law, the only federal law, one of the only federal laws, forgive me, the most important, that prosecutes traffickers and protects victims. And so when I met with our Alex Acosta, who was the prosecutor uh, at the time of the Epstein case, he wrote a letter. I, I found through a source, I found an email that was written to one of Epstein's defense attorneys. Epstein had several defense attorneys, all very uh, powerful and influential and certainly leaders in, in, in their fields. And so the prosecutor wrote in the letter, um, we, the prosecution, were assaulted, and I quote, assaulted, uh, during the time of Epstein's investigation. Now, you tell me, Alex, when does a prosecutor, number one, when does, that pro when does a prosecutor usually speak to a journalist, one? Two, when does a prosecutor use the word assaulted to describe the actions of the defense attorney or defense attorneys? As oh, absolutely. Look, the folks that went after this scumbag were heroes. I mean, this is a death sentence probably still for them. And the answer is go after the globalists at every front. Just like with the Catholic Church, we're going to end up showing that basically half of these people are pedophiles. It's a cult of pedophiles. I've studied it for two decades plus. I couldn't believe it when insiders told me 20 years ago, but man, I tell you, it is just totally sick, totally evil, and it describes all the tyranny we see. I mean, look at this article here out of CNN. Vietnamese girls, we're talking young girls, smuggled into China and sold as child bribes. Little kids, like five, six, seven years old. Uh, teacher to be prosecuted for calling Muhammad child molester. Uh, Breitbart, I mean, all she said was that, the, you know, the Koran was saying you can go after 12 and 11-year-olds. So there's almost like a normalization. You talk about the U.N., some of the U.N. exposes it, but the U.N.'s also been caught in its own trafficking. U.N. peacekeepers, DynCorp, Halliburton, we've got uh, all that going on. Uh, we got NAMBLA trying to get recognized. I mean, I mean, there seems to be this whole hidden agenda. What's your view on that? Uh, yes, I, I, I totally agree with you. I mean, I, I, I find this confounding. At that secret of 20,000 acre ranch on the border. And every hallway was just lined with devil mask, weird murals of children being eaten by devils, little beds outside the rooms, all this weird stuff. And, and Wayne Madsen and Beg said, this looks like Bohemian Grove. This looks like, you know, some type of real perv stuff. This was like a secret society. And then it came on the Washington Post a month later. I guess to get ahead of us, they went, yeah, it's a secret society for Bohemian Grove meeting. No big deal. So all I'm telling you is, man, we're in a lot of trouble. And there's a lot of freaks in control. And you hear about the psychopath that kills people on his own getting in trouble. But the high-level ones, they just run the show. And uh, this rabbit hole, I, mean, I remember having John DeCamp, former state senator, former CIA black ops commander in Vietnam on. And... Uh, he doesn't really come on anymore. He's gotten uh, uh, pretty old, uh, has some health issues. I'll just leave it at that. He wrote the Franklin cover-up. Most of what's in that book later came out 
and he was he, he was on air like 15 years ago going in boys town and then i tell you penn state they sell the kids out of the football program and rape them and i took him off air and then it all came out was true and i mean it's just those of us that aren't attracted to children and aren't attracted to satanism we just don't get it finishing up with our guest this is really a hard subject to talk about uh Ms. Sarnoff, uh, again, has, has written the book. It's available on our website, ConchitaSarnoff.com or ATRVT.org. We've only got a few minutes left. This segment's over. But dealing with the rabbit hole, your research, is it a cult? Is it a larger group? Or is it groups of people that take over institutions? I mean, why is it that so many big institutions end up being run by pedophiles, universities, uh, colleges, uh, schools, reformatories, uh, religious groups, military groups? I mean, what is going on from your deep research as an investigative journalist? Well, look, I, I, Alex, I can't, I can't tell you for a fact that this is a cult. I mean, I don't, I haven't, I haven't studied that, and and that's interesting because that poses another question that I will now pursue. But I haven't pursued that road yet. Uh, but I will tell you that the cartels, the Mexican cartels, the Russian cartels, the Ukrainian cartels, the Chinese cartels. Uh, these are the Colombian cartels. These are the large networks. In the United States, you have a cartel called MS, which stands for Mara Salvatrucha. And uh, MS works closely with several Mexican cartels. And they are definitely very involved in the trafficking. Sure, let me ask you this question, because if Vladimir Putin can be proven to be involved, and that's a big deal, he well, claims I he's trying to fix corruption. Is there any evidence which side of things Vladimir Putin's on? No, I have not studied uh, any, I have not read anything about Putin being involved in cartels that sell children. Uh, whether he is or not, I can't, I can't tell you yes or no, but I have not seen anything. Sure. I, in what about the finders and stuff in the 80s? You know, the CIA has been directly connected to it. Well, look, I, I think this is what I, I, I believe that there are men in very high places, such as was proven during my seven year research who are involved in one way or another, directly or indirectly, whether they're protecting a pedophile or they've tried it or they're interested, they're there. Uh, at every level, certainly at every socioeconomic level, uh, in every country, you have that. You have that, you have that in the United States, you have that in France, you have that in England, you have that in Switzerland, you have that in Spain and in Italy and everywhere else, in China, Australia. So. You know, it exists. Ped pedophilia is a disease. As a matter of fact, there's a pharmaceutical, which I just found out, a very interesting research is going on in Stockholm at the Karolinska Institute, where they're using a drug that is currently on the market for a different indication for prostate cancer. To block pedophilia and, behavior? Yeah, and what, well, well, you what know, they, once they convict somebody, a ball-peen hammer 10 or 15 times in the back of the head, too, that cures it. Thousands of years ago, there was a basic form of chivalry. Our ancestors would hear the drums of war, giving the warriors of the tribe a chance to organize and prepare a defense. 60 years ago, when foreign air forces were approaching filled with bombs, they had drums of their own, air raid sirens. But in the 21st century, there are silent weapons for quiet war. Pathogens added to the food and water and to the lining of plastics that destroy our vitality, turn off our hormones, and accelerate our journey towards death. I personally counter this onslaught with Anthroplex. Anthroplex is designed with known organic concentrated herbs to create the basic foundation to normal metabolic activity inside the human body. Discover why Anthroplex is turning so many heads today. It's time for us to take our bodies back into our own hands, and it starts at InfoWarsLife.com with Anthroplex.